Good morning, friends. Happy Thanksgiving. Welcome back to Table Full of Joy. I'm Cheryl. We are getting started early this morning to get our turkey in the oven. We are headed to family's house later this afternoon to um, have dinner. So we are going to get going. First, we need some coffee before we manhandle this big bird. I am not a fan of giblet gravy. I don't like the neck and all that kind of stuff. It's not my thing. But my dogs love it. So it's not going to waste. We're going to cook it in the pan. I actually do use the broth to make my gravy, so I'll strain it. I just don't like the chunks of that kind of stuff. It's just not my thing. So we're going to start with our stuff that we're going to put inside the turkey. I don't stuff it. I make We make dressing, but we don't do stuffing. Um, I do stuff the turkey, kind of, but I stuff it with aromatics. I stuff it with things that are going to flavor the turkey from the inside out. So we're gonna start with those things, but I also use the same aromatics in the bottom of my roaster pan so that it's gonna flavor that juice that's coming off the turkey as well. So let's start first with our aromatics before we get our hands really messy, because I'm gonna butter this thing. I love to butter a turkey. So I have a stick of softened butter that we're gonna rub all over this thing with some herbs. But let's get started first with our aromatics that we're gonna put inside the turkey, but we're also gonna put some um, inside the roasting pan at the bottom. So we just have a lemon. I love lemon and stuff, but before we cut this, let's zest it because we're gonna put some zest in our butter that's going on the outside of our turkey. So we're gonna zest our lemon real quick. Make sure that we're using every part of this stuff to get the most flavor. Lemon just adds a real clean flavor to whatever you're cooking and poultry and lemon just go hand in hand, I think. It's just, and you don't really taste the lemon in the gravy. Some people have been a little leery of putting lemon inside a turkey because they're like, well, now my gravy's gonna taste, you know, citrus. It doesn't, it just adds a nice rounded flavor. The lemon actually cuts the fattiness. So when you are doing turkey gravy and you have that little bit of lemon in there, it actually cuts the fat and it doesn't taste as heavy, it doesn't taste as uh, greasy because you have the lemon in it that's gonna help cut that. So we just need the zest. And when you're zesting, make sure that you're only getting the yellow part. You don't want this white pit down here because that is really bitter. And that's gonna totally change the flavor profile of whatever you're putting it in because then you're gonna have this bitter note at the end and nobody wants to eat that. So we've almost got our lemon zested. I think it's looking pretty good. All right, we're gonna call that good. So we just have the zest of one lemon. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this. I am just gonna cut this into eighths. So we're gonna cut it in quarters lengthwise, and then we're gonna cut it in quarters again, this direction, so we end up with smaller pieces like this. We really wanna expose the lemon, if you've got seeds in your lemon, try to kind of pick them out if you can, if they're sitting right on top of the surface like these are, because I don't want to end up having to strain lemons out of my gravy. So if you see them, just go ahead and pull them out. Look, there was too many in this one. I think this looks pretty good. There's one more right there. Let's get this one last seed. All right, there we go. Okay, I think we're good there. So we're also going to take a whole bulb of garlic. One whole bulb, not a clove, but one whole bulb of garlic. Let's cut our top off of this thing. I can peel a little bit of the paper off because we don't need all of that. So getting the, the loose stuff off of it, but make sure that it's still fully intact. And then we're gonna cut it in half so that we are exposing our garlic all the way through. And then we're gonna take all of this garlic along with our lemons. We're gonna add a little bit of onion. I have a big onion, it's not gonna take all of this. So we're gonna cut our onion in half. Holy cow, it's got a, a hard root. Okay. This is one of those big Costco onions. So we're just gonna peel the skin of this onion off. And 
I just be, I just don't want the skin um, to be stuck. So we're just going to take it off. Make sure we get it all. We don't want that to wind up in our turkey. <clears throat> so this is a 15 pound turkey. So we're just going to use <clears throat> a quarter of this onion inside and the other quarter we're going to put in the roasting pan to flavor the juice that comes off of the turkey. So we're just going to cut this into force. And then this stuff, this might seem funny, but we are going to take this and we are going to sprinkle our lemon and our garlic and all of this stuff with some poultry seasoning right here on our board. Because any chance you get to get flavor into your turkey, you want to take it. So we are get a good amount of that on there. And then this is going to go inside the cavity of our turkey. So you're just going to take all of these pieces. If you get, if you get some loose paper from your um, garlic, just toss it in the garbage. Don't worry about it. So we're going to put all of this inside our bird. So we're not really stuffing our turkey. We're not stuffing it with anything that you're going to eat. We are just stuffing it with things that are going to make it taste good that are going to, as the onion <clears throat> and the garlic and the lemon gets hot, it's going to release flavor, which is going to permeate the meat of the turkey. You need my hands a quick wash before we touch anything else. Always with poultry, make sure that you're being safe. You're washing your hands in between things. All right, now that we have clean hands, we're gonna get started on what we're gonna put in the bottom of our roasting pan. So we have the other quarter of our onion. Now this one we're gonna to wanna to cut the root end and the stem end off of the onion. We're just gonna cut this into big slices about a half an inch thick. And we're gonna put these slices down in the bottom of our roaster pan, kind of scatter them around down here. Like I said, we are trying to flavor every single part of our turkey. Let's grab some more garlic. And we are going to put some whole garlic cloves in the bottom. It's a tight head of garlic. Get some paper off so you can see if we can get a couple of cloves off of here. There we go. Let's use our knife to get a couple of these started. You can know, you know it's a really fresh garlic bulb is if the garlic is super tight, then you know that it's really fresh. So we're going to take four garlic cloves and we are going to smash them. Getting a lot of paper off this. Yeah, that's a pretty small, let's do one more little one. Okay. So we have three pretty good sized ones and two smaller cloves. We're just going to give these a smash. Then we're going to take the paper off and these are going to go in the bottom of our roaster with the onions. Smashing them helps release that skin. <coughs> so you can just pull this right off. And we're just going to start tossing those into our roaster as we get them peeled. Turkey essentially does not have a lot of flavor, so you really have to make sure that you're getting flavor wherever you can. Make sure that you're getting flavor in, in everything and on everything. Make sure that you're salting your turkey. Make sure that you are salting the things that you're putting um, in the turkey. Make sure that you're salting the things that are going into your, that it's going to make your stock to make your gravy at the bottom. This one's got 
Sometimes the skins on garlic can be really, really tough to get off, but I think that's good. Pull the paper off that one. Make sure that you're kind of distributing this to the, bo the bottom of your roaster pan too, so that you don't end up with garlic just in one spot. Whoops. All right, let's grab another garlic because we lost one in the garbage. Let's just pull another one off. Smash this. Okay, we've got all of our garlic in there. Let's clean up our paper mess here from all of this garlic so we don't wind up with this and anything else. Grab our paper towel. Careful for cutting board real good. Okay, so now the other thing that we're going to put down in there is we're going to put celery. Now, I don't see a reason to use all of the beautiful outer pieces of celery because these I will use for something else. You can use these if you're doing stuffing. I'm not doing the dressing this time. My sister-in-law is doing it, so I don't need um, to worry about saving these. But I'm just going to use the leaves. These have amazing flavor. Celery leaves actually have a lot of flavor. So we're going to just take our celery leaves and we're going to cut these into small pieces. Just cut the very root end off of it. And then we have some beautiful little celery pieces that we're going to drop down inside our roaster pan that is going to flavor our gravy and make this taste amazing. Make sure we get it all down in there. Okay, now that we have our aromatics taken care of, we're going to start on our butter that's going to go on the outside of our turkey, which is going to make it taste delicious. Because what is better than a turkey that has been rubbed down with butter? All right, so this too, we're going to add some poultry seasoning back to this too. So we have poultry seasoning inside our turkey that is with our aromatics. We're going to add some poultry seasoning to our butter. And then I keep the seasonings on my turkey pretty simple. I don't like to do a whole lot of weird stuff on it. So I'm going to just use a little bit of Johnny Garlics. I like to put this, it's a good way to get garlic flavor and some other flavors on your turkey, but add it to the butter. Good way to get it spread on there. And this might seem a little weird. I like mustard powder mixed into my butter to put on my turkey. So we're going to add a little bit of mustard powder to this. Mustard just tends to add a unique flavor to it. And then we're going to add quite a bit of salt. This is a 15 pound turkey. And so we want to make sure that our entire turkey has really good flavor. So we're going to start with three teaspoons of salt. This is just kosher salt. We have our, our little spatula. We're going to use that to mix all of these flavors into the butter that's going to get spread on the turkey. I'm going to cook my turkey at 375 for the first 30 minutes, and then I'm going to kick it down to 325 and I'm going to let it cook for the remainder, which this is a 15 pound turkey it should take about three and a half hours. So it is just a little after eight, which means my turkey should be done around noon. We're eating at one. That gives it plenty of time for it to rest, which you want to make sure that is super, super important is resting your turkey is really important because if you take a hot turkey right out of the oven and you cut into it, you're going to lose all of your juice. All of your juice is going to go everywhere. But if you let it sit for 20 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes or so, you're still going to have a hot, hot turkey. Make sure you tent it with foil. You're still going to have a hot bird, but all that juice is going to redistribute back into the meat and you're going to wind up with a juicy, flavorful turkey. So we're going to get our butter rub on our turkey. And there is no other way to do this, honestly, but just to get in there with your hands. That's the only way to do it. I have tried using other tools. You just can't. You just, you really just have to get in there with your hands and do it. So I am going to take off my one ring on my hand and we're just going to get in with our butter and we are just going to butter this thing. Make sure that we are getting some up underneath the skin right here on the breast meat. You want to pull that skin back. Take a little bit. You want to tuck this underneath. You want to get that as far back underneath that breast meat or breast skin as you can. Okay. 
but you want to make sure that we are getting this all flavor on everything. Every part of this turkey needs to have. And I know a lot of people don't like to baste. Basting is not... Basting was something that was kind of old school, I guess, but I do because I put so much flavor in the bottom of my pan to cook my, my broth or to make my gravy with. I want to take advantage of as much of that as I possibly can. So I want to make sure that I'm using a baster, turkey baster, or if you don't have a turkey baster, use a spoon, but use something and don't miss out on rubbing or <clears throat> basting your turkey with all of that beautiful juice that's down in, the, in this roasting pan. Don't miss any of that because that's just going to keep your turkey moist. It's going to give it more flavor. And don't forget to go behind the wings because you want, I'm not a really huge dark meat fan, but a lot of my family is. So I want to make sure that I have really good flavor on all of that dark meat too, because they enjoy that. But this is going to be an amazing turkey. Okay, I think we got all of our butter out of our bowl. I'm going to use my other hand here to scrape this butter off with my fingers. Because we don't want to waste any of this. This is all good flavor. But now our turkey is all covered. Again, we need to wash our hands because we just rubbed a, a raw turkey. So we need to give our hands a good wash again. So our turkey is all rubbed. <clears throat> it has all the butter and the herbs and the seasonings. Everything is on it, so it's ready to go in the oven. And as I said, I'm going to put it in at 375. I'm going to let it cook for about 30 minutes at 375, and then I'm going to turn the heat down to 325 and let it finish the rest of the time. So we're going to get this in the oven, and you're going to have a juicy turkey. All right, so our turkey is out of the oven, and it's smelling amazing. I'll give you guys a quick look at it. There is our beautiful turkey, nice and golden brown all the way around. So we are going to make our gravy now. All right, so we have our pan with all of our aromatics that we put in here. If you remember, we did our celery and our carrots, or not carrots, but our celery and our onions and our garlic. So we are going to strain all of this into our pot that we are going to make our gravy in. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit so we've got some room for our pan. And then we're just going to pour it right through the strainer. Um, these aromatics have done their job already, so we're done with those. So we're just going to get our, our juice, which is going to make our gravy. And we're going to wipe our pan out so that we can transport our turkey um, up to family's house for dinner. But we're going to get the rest of these aromatics. Get this drained really, really good so we don't miss any of that flavor of the broth right here. So we're going to put this on the stove. We're going to bring this to a boil. And you can use cornstarch. You could do a slurry to thicken your gravy if you wanted to. My favorite way to do it is the French style where you take softened butter and flour and you make a thickener out of it and you add that to your gravy and you thicken it that way. So as soon as this comes to a boil, we'll make our flour and butter mixture. So our turkey drippings and our broth is boiling. So we're gonna get started. We've got two tablespoons of flour. We're gonna put in two tablespoons of room temperature butter. You wanna make sure it's pretty soft. Otherwise it's not gonna mix into your flour very well. So we're just gonna mash our butter into our flour. We're going to make kind of a paste out of this. But I love doing this for gravy because I think the butter just adds a little bit more richness. I don't do this all the time, but it's the holiday. So, you know, you can always have a little extra butter 
for Thanksgiving, <laughs> for Christmas. So we're just gonna finish mashing our butter into our flour so we have a good mixture. Make sure that you have all the flour mixed in, that you don't have any dry flour, because if you put this in with dry flour in it, then you're gonna wind up with um, a clumpy gravy, and nobody wants clumpy flour in their gravy. So let's just get, make sure we get our fork all the way around the edges of this bowl. So we get all of this. You can even give it a good stir like that if you have to. And we're gonna take a clump of this and we're gonna drop this right into our broth. And we're gonna start whisking. And you wanna whisk pretty vigorously so that you get this flour and butter incorporated into your broth. And then we can start to see if we need to add a little bit more. And it looks like I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of this. You can always add more chicken stock to this if you get it too thick. It's not a huge issue. I think this is gonna make a really nice gravy to go on our mashed potatoes. We're gonna let this cook for a couple of minutes because while it cooks and thickens, it's gonna cook out that flour that's in here and that's what we want. We want a nice um, thick creamy gravy. So you can see we don't have any lumps in here. It's perfectly smooth. We're just gonna let this continue to cook. And while it's doing that, we are going to get started on cutting our turkey so that we can head out and get over to our family's house for Thanksgiving. All right, so we have our turkey cut here. This is all that we're taking up. The rest of it, we're gonna leave it here and I'll do something with it later this weekend. But this is all ready to take up. Our gravy is nice and thick looking super tasty. That's gonna go into a container and go up. So we're just gonna finish getting some things together and then we're gonna head up and have Thanksgiving dinner with our family. I wanna thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen today. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving. If you're new around here, please give the video a like, subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that we're gonna do over the next couple months. And it means so much to me that you guys have spent time with me. Have a great day.